Really? Okay. And then after he, he traveled with that and he has fame and everything, then he came back and performed you guys? Exactly right. And you guys didn't have any kind of animosity or anything? Not really, not really. I think, uh, you know, when someone someone does something like that to you, you never forget. Right. But, you know, we forget, you know, okay. and so we kept rolling, you know, we kept rolling. And, uh, in fact, Major worked with me for a long time after... Uh, William and myself broke up in the 80s. Okay. Major, then me and Major started working together with a guy named Frank Washington. Okay. And so we were like the Dolphinics on the East Coast, and William was out in California. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. so everything was good. You know, okay. Was great. So, you know, they were working out there, and we were working up there, so, you know, that was, that was sweet. So now when he left the group, it was you and William were left, and then you had to get a third member? Right. We were, like, working a long time. We did, a lot of shows, just me and William, you know. Really? Yeah, and we were handling it. Okay. It was, it was, it was being Just the two of you? Just the two of us. Okay. You know, we did um, a lot of work. We, we did a, almost a whole tour of James Brown, but just the two of us. We went to Chicago, and this is when I met uh, some guy came backstage, and we hit it off, and we started rehearsing. His name was Bruce uh, Peterson. Really? So he became the third Delphine? He became the third Delphine okay. at that time. So we trained him and everything, and he worked out good for like maybe like three, four years. And then, let me see, we went through a lot of, uh, I think Eban came in after that. I don't know if Eban came in after that. But we had a lot of different changes in the really? old groups, you know. Okay. Uh, and I understand you have a, a show coming up in Boston? Yes, we have um, a show on okay. the 18th. February 18th. February 18th. And where does somebody go to get tickets for that show? I think they can go to, um, can they go to uh, John Hancock Hall? Is, is it, we're playing at the John Hancock Hall in Boston, Massachusetts. So I guess you have to call up there and find out. Okay. And that's Ticketmaster. his son in the background, yeah. his uh, son uh, and road manager. And what is your name again? Maurice. Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maurice is a little shy, he's, you know, behind the camera uh, sort of guy. Um, so, and the, the guys that you're singing with now, who are they? Uh, I have a guy, uh, he's out of New York City, his name is uh, Joseph Branch. Joseph Branch, okay. Yes, and uh, he's out of New York. And, uh, and he sings the tenor parts? He sings the tenor parts. Okay. He does a great job. Okay. You know? And uh, Salam Love, he's out of Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I heard of Salam, yeah, okay. And uh, so we're just doing it, doing the best we can do, and uh, we're doing a, you know, a, a fair, a fair job. Everybody's enjoying what they see, you know. Now, do you ever get tired of performing the older songs? Because again, we never get tired of hearing those songs. No. Do you ever get tired of performing them? No, I never do because, okay. you know, I, you know, uh, this is a blessing to have something to do that somebody can relate to. Right. You know, you know, that's that's the blessing. You go on the show and you do. Did not blow your mind. Love me, love you, hey, love. And the crowd goes uh, wild. You know? it, it, it makes the work easy for you, kind of like you know. Really? Yeah. So you, I couldn't abandon that because I know that's what they come to hear. You know? Exactly. So, now, when you're out on the road, do you perform any of your new music? I haven't been doing anything new because what I want to do is to release this stuff and make it, you know, known. So I don't want nobody to hear it for the first time and never heard it on the radio. Or right. Like that. Right. And that's kind of. I remember I went to a concert one time. Uh, it was Sly's concert, Sly and Family Stone. And uh, it was at the Spectrum. And he came in and he did a whole album. This place was packed. But he did a whole album of stuff that he was about to release and nobody knew what he was playing. Wow. I mean, that was the, that, that was the, that taught me a lesson. Wow. Really it did, you know, because as great as he was and how many hot songs he had, that was a total kind of like disaster. You know? Really? I was angry about that. You know? Yeah, because I, I think, I think when we come out, we want to hear oh, exactly. this yeah. stuff that we yeah. know. And speaking of, of Sly, I, I mean, have you heard what's going on with him now? How do you feel about that? I mean, somebody says he's living out of his van or something. This business has many a twist and turn, you know. Um, but we really, you know, people have to start rumors. You never know what's, what's the problem, you know. People like to talk like that. I really don't. I, you know, I don't even like to get into that because of the fact that if I if I can't help him, you know, in some kind of way, I'm, you know, I would, you know. What right. I mean? So this is how I'm looking at. It. Hopefully, he's not doing as bad as people say he's doing. But um, you know, I know he did a lot of great things for yes, the music he did. industry. Yes, you know? he did. And, uh, 
if he's out there sleeping in his van, somebody's not taking care of what they're supposed to be taking care of. Exactly. You know, as far as, you know, being able to help him. Because I know he made millions of people, millions of dollars. And exactly. And all these people who used to work with him and whatever, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully, you know, he's not doing as bad as people say. Right. Now, now the, the music business now, when they... Um, play your songs, like you hear all these, these oldies, like golden oldies, you know, tunes, and of course your, your songs on it. Do artists get, get paid for that, like forever and ever, for those yes, old songs? They should. I mean, mm -hmm. you should, if you're connected with someone who's collecting, you know, you should be affiliated with someone who's going to be looking back and collecting money for you. Right. You get it as long as it's coming, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's never a cut off on that. Now, again, getting, getting back to um, Major Harris, once he, he did have his hit and he was singing with, with you guys, did he ever sing his hit during one of your shows? Sure. Really? Every time. Really? You better sing it. Okay. I mean, that, that made him very valuable, you know what I mean? It would be crazy for him not to sing. So every show that we had when he was working with us, me and William, you know, after you came back, love won't let me wait. Before. Really? Right? That, I mean, that was a yeah, hot that song. Was a song. Yeah. That was a big song. Yeah. That was, uh, that was Bobby Eli and uh, Vinnie Barrett. I think Vinnie wrote the lyrics to that. And Bobby did the music.